Hello everyone and welcome to the Pro Health video series. This is video one of a three-part series designed to demonstrate the visualization capabilities within the Microsoft platform. Note that all videos have been created with out-of-the-box technologies and no third-party tools have been used. Also note that all videos have been created on a de-identified set of patient data from your very own Cogito Data Warehouse platform. However, due to the fact that a test instance of data was used, some data points may be skewed and do not represent accurate numbers. So let's get started. So the first technology we'll see is called Power View. Now, there are, there are two related technologies actually um, that live inside of Excel, Power Pivot and Power View. Power View is the reporting side. Power Pivot is what I consider the, the back end of Excel which allows you to pull in data from different sources, mash the data up right inside of Excel on your desktop, and then create these types of uh, reports and dashboards. So let's fire up Excel, and you'll see we're going to use a, a previously built model called ProHealth Model. And since we have some PowerView reports created already, that's what's trying to load now. So we see a series of tabs show up, and across the bottom are the names of the different reports that we have built already. So we'll go into each one of these in just a second. So the first thing to show is where, did the, where this data actually came from. So inside of Excel, we have these new ribbons for Power View and for Power Pivot, which is the back end. So let's open up Power Pivot and actually briefly look at the data that we've pulled in. So when we click Manage, we see here that we have a whole list of tabs inside of Excel, and these were actually individual tables that we pulled in from a corporate data source. And here we see uh, we have one just specifically for departments, and we can scroll down a little bit until we see uh, some actual uh, location names for our departments. We have the same thing for our diagnoses and we have uh, hospital admissions, patient visit data, etc. So let's get rid of that and let's go back and look at the reports. So on the right hand side you'll notice that the same data sets that we just looked at um, are presented to us in a pivot table format. So if we wanted to go in and just drag and drop diagnosis codes, uh, diagnosis names, and data that's related to those diagnoses it's just as simple as clicking on the box or dragging and dropping it onto the canvas. And the canvas is the white area uh, that we see in the middle of the screen. So once we've uh, built our reports, uh, you can see right off the bat we have some pretty easy um, contextual filtering. What I mean by that is as I clicked on November, you saw the other two charts uh, in this particular dashboard change automatically. Now, typically in the past, that would have been a function of the IT department to actually build that capability, and that's no longer the case. So with this particular technology, we have the ability to, uh, to put this uh, functionality right in the hands of the business user. So you see, I can continue to click around and uh, my other charts change, and in the event that I have a hierarchy, I can double click it and drill in as we just saw uh, in this chart in the upper left. So anywhere where there's a hierarchy we can drill down through it and we can then go and select on a particular day and we see the same contextual filtering um, throughout. Um, additionally on the left hand side here you'll see something that's called a slicer and we went and built uh, a ranking category into the data set and we're now seeing how we can filter all of these charts uh, by the categories um, that we're ranking by. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, in this instance we wanted to look at our diabetes population and you'll see a couple different visualizations on this page. One of them uh, in the upper right hand corner is direct integration with Bing Maps that's actually why this one takes a second to load because it's going out to the internet um, and actually uh, connecting with Bing Maps uh, and it's mapping all of our uh, our user base against uh, some known 
um, geolocating type attribute. In this case, it's city and state. Uh, and then that's how it's able to map uh, the entire population um, across this map here. So as you can see, we can blow this map out and then we can move it around and we can start to drill down into it a little bit or zoom into it. Uh, we have pretty standard mouse over capabilities or flyover. So we can see some data points right off the bat about our population. And in this case, we're seeing uh, the age band of our population and just the general patient count. So let's, uh, let's bring that back down. And we see that we also have our patient count by age band in the upper left. And along the bottom, what we've done is uh, we've graphed the max of the length of stay in days uh, against the average length. And then the size of our bubble is the total number of visits. And all of this is mapped by age band. So once we do that and we bring down um, a date element, uh, that's down on the play band a little bit below here what you can see is we can play this over time and we can see how our uh, how our different categories change and in this case we can see that the age band of 70 to 79 happens to be our most volatile in terms of uh, length of stay so we could continue our analysis um, on that but let's pop over to to do some quick readmission analysis and you'll see some similar functionality here. So we'll have, we have a scatter chart uh, in the upper left. Uh, over on the right, we have the average length, the average number of days before someone readmits in the 15 and 30 day readmission categories. And then along the bottom, you obviously see the total of the 15 and 30 day readmissions along with the ratio. So if we want to analyze this data, by facility, the first thing we can do is we can map our facilities across time like we saw before and we can start to drill into the facilities that have the larger number of admissions and readmissions. So in this case uh, we'll click on one of them in the upper right quadrant and we're going to see how all the other charts filter accordingly and we can start to dig into the individual readmission numbers and ratios for that particular facility. And then we can also multi-select and we can see how uh, a few of our uh, performers make up uh, some of the numbers that we're seeing below. Now in the event that we wanted to um, do some additional analysis, uh, it's really as easy as dragging and dropping our data elements. So we're going to move our one chart to the side and let's go in and just start start clicking through some data because really uh, this tool is considered a data discovery tool so we're not going to hurt anything by just clicking around and seeing what makes sense. So in this case we brought on age band and patient count and I don't know if I'm going to find anything more useful uh, with that particular table so let's see here let's go ahead and maybe we just get rid of these and let's start again so let's just bring back on our average of our minutes in room and to room and let's display that by department name now we have quite a few departments so it gets a little bit busy so let's move these around a little bit let's go ahead and change our visualization Okay, so that's not bad. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. And bring this one down just a little bit. And we can go ahead and change what we're sorting by and the direction in which we're sorting. So once again, all of this happens on the fly. Uh, we don't have to go back to the IT department to do this. And we still have our contextual filtering. And we didn't have to go and add any additional uh, linkages behind the scene. So let's scroll over. I don't see this particular facility, but um, maybe if we wanted to continue down this path, uh, we'd remove one of these charts and, and we could continue however we wanted. 
Okay, so the final uh, report we have is just a quick uh, readmission uh, ranking. So what we're looking at actually are for our 15 and 30 day readmissions, we're looking at the the diagnosis codes that show that show up most frequently. Now, keep in mind this is test data, so if you're surprised by some of these, um, don't be. Um, it's it's test data built on top of your data set, uh, but you can see that we can we can produce additional type of analysis. Uh, we can rank these. Uh, we can produce multiple ranking categories, and we can apply those to our visualizations. Now, one thing to think about in terms of expanding um, our analysis, just imagine that in the future we, we start to import data from personal fitness devices uh, from our population, uh, and maybe in some instances uh, we actually have tools that can bring in um, heart rate analysis uh, from something right in the, uh, our patient's home, such as the Xbox One. So this, the screenshot you see in the upper right is actually a video of a patient's heart rate being monitored by the cameras of the Xbox One. The, and that happens to have a color and an infrared camera and it's analyzing the fluctuations in the patient's cheeks uh, to analyze his heart rate. So if we want to flow that data in to our particular system, we're actually able to do that and still report on it the same way that we just saw reporting on the other uh, on the other data sets. So as a quick recap, we opened Excel 2013 and we had two tools available to us, Power Pivot, which allowed us to bring data in uh, to Excel and then Power View, which allowed us to mash that data up and analyze it right on our desktop. So thanks for watching. Thank you.